It's Making the Grade, starring Connor Chin. Mark Barron. Jake Olinger. Skyler Trimper. Julian Evans. Steven Sateric. Jared Voodoo. Sam DeCoste. Zohim Butt. Andy Maloof. Adam Ng. Sukanya Puther. Kelly Biancamano. Yinka Bolerin. Jamie Lewis. Hello, SBHS. Welcome back to episode three of Making the Grade. I'm Skylar. And I'm Jared. We have a lot of news to share with you guys today. From various holiday donations to another installment of Wacky News, we have it all. Every year around the holiday season, SBHS has a great cause called the Giving Tree. Taking part in this cause is very simple. Let's find out how to participate. Hey viewers, it's a season of giving here at SBHS, and there are lots of things to do in the community. Today we're going to focus on the Giving Tree. Let's take a look at what the staff members have to say. So we have two Giving Trees located in the high school, one in the annex and one in the main building. And what is on them is basically little tags or ornaments that um, ask you to pledge to donate a gift card to, um, to a family in need within the community again and those gift cards are suggested to be in $5 increments to local stores such as Target, gas station, stop and shop, um, Marshall, so it's kind of like a recognition program for those that are pledging to do a good deed and spread some kindness for the holiday. Um, I think there's a lot of benefits. I think it's great because we, we're a school of character and we really try to focus on kindness and, and ser service um, and those being part of our core values and those things are, um, those two traits are something that happens when you are kind to somebody else, you do this community service and then it also helps those in our community that are in need. So the ages, um, you know, the kids in the family are anywhere from elementary through high school and beyond. So it's nice because we're not only helping out, um, you know, you, you might be helping out someone you know and you don't even realize it. And I think it really makes everyone feel good for doing such, you know, such a good thing um, at this time of year. Wow, how sweet is that? I think SBHS is doing great things to help out others. We are really working our hardest to do good for the community. I hope all you viewers are inspired by our students and staff here at SBHS and find ways that you can give back to the community too. If you would like to participate in this wonderful cause, the Giving Trees are located in the Annex and at the main entrance. And that's just one of the many holiday season events going on in South Brunswick High School community right now. Another is, is the Rise Against Hunger event. December was the month of giving, and what says giving more than a once-in-a-lifetime meal and packaging event? Let's check out how the South Brunswick community gave back this holiday season. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you ready to join us to rise against hunger and pack it over 30,000 meals with us today? On December 8, 2018, students and faculty joined together and packaged a record number of 40,000 meals in three hours for the NGO Rise Against Hunger. So Rise Against Hunger is a global nonprofit organization. Their job essentially is uh, to uh, feed people in need all over the world. Uh, they have a number of different sustainability programs that they do with people in, in uh, 75 countries around the world. So Rise Against Hunger is teaming up with the UN for that vision of no hunger by the year 2030. And what we did is um, 
We are doing that through volunteers such as South Monmouth High School and different corporations, civic group, faith-based organizations. Really anyone who wants to get involved with Rise Against Hunger uh, can just join us packaging meals, um, just helping us grow our movement to overall reach the world without hunger. Several students commented on why they wanted to volunteer for this event. I wanted to volunteer this event today because it's something that we learned about in school and it's definitely something that we've learned about the impact of and I think it's a great way to support other nations around the world, especially during the holidays. Alright, so my role at the event today is to put the take the rice and weigh it to make sure it's good enough to package and like weighs enough because it has to be a certain weight. This event is kind of different from my other experiences because it's not as like global. I mean, we're shipping all of these meals to like different countries, and I've never really experienced anything like that. Uh, basically, I want to accomplish is like just to feel happy with myself, feel like a good person, because it's like it's always good to give back. Everybody had an amazing time during the event while helping the lives of thousands of people around the globe. Cheer for Michael as he hits it for twelve thousand meters. Let's hear from Mr. Fisher as he hits it for 36,000 meals! Amazing! SBHS should definitely host more events like this in the future because it's really something very different from everything else because it's supported by outside organizations as well and it really operates like a well-oiled machine and it's something, it's something that makes such a larger impact even beyond our community even though it all starts here. We're so grateful for having students and faculty that go above and beyond. We thank Nick DeMere for reaching out to Dr. Negerval for hosting such a fantastic event. Hey Jared, have you seen doors decorated in the hallway lately? Yeah, well, what's up with that? It's a part of a student council campaign called Deck the Halls. Let's go to Sam to learn more. Oh, I didn't see you there. Welcome to Making the Grade. I'm Sam, and I'm here at the Activities Office, where student council members come together to create doors for a yearly holiday tradition here at the high school, Deck the Halls. Today, we are meeting with members of student council who spend the holiday season decorating classroom doors. So Deck the Halls is an opportunity for teachers to have their doors, their classroom doors decorated for the holidays, and it just kind of gives the school a little bit extra holiday spirit um, through the month of December and January. But we dedicate the month of December to um, decking the halls, um, and basically what that consists of, uh, we ask our teachers and staff members to submit order forms um, where they get a say in the door decorations that they want for the holiday season. Um, once we receive that order form, as a student council, we work really hard throughout the month of December uh, to make those doors um, and just bringing holiday spirit to South Brunswick. It's really stressing because we have over 40 doors and there's about 14 of us, so we have to work really hard. But it's also like, it gets us like feel proud of, about ourselves because we work so hard and then it pays off. Deck the Halls is a tradition which has gone on for many years here at SBHS and it has become a favorite of the student council members. Oh, definitely. It's within my top three, um, but definitely I look forward to this every single year. Before I was an advisor, I always looked forward to putting in my order and getting my door made, and now I'm really loving actually making them for teachers. The student council really loves making these doors. Like Each one probably takes us like, a class to make for each of us, um, and it's very fun to make them because we get to add like our little creative pizzazz and also just get to like raise spirit around the school. This is my first year in student council, so I don't know if this is going to be my most favorite tradition, but so far it is. Um, I think they really love it. I think it's a long and tedious activity at times, um, but I know they really love doing this for the teachers in the school and they have, have a good time doing it. While many doors have already been decorated, there are still many teachers who are interested in having their doors decorated this holiday season. We've still got a lot of doors to do. Um, it, it gets pretty busy in here. Done six doors so far, um, and many of them have been for my own teachers or teachers in the past, um, and that really helps that we know like who we're doing and we need to add a little bit that maybe they didn't originally write, but we know about them. Uh, we have, I think, about 14 or 15 more doors to work on, so I, and we're also getting new forms, so there's more to come. Back.
it was great to talk to student council about one of their favorite Ely traditions. Thank you for joining us on the show this holiday season. My name is Sam, we're making the grade, back to the studio. Thank you, Sam. Student council has worked hard on these doors and it, cer it certainly gives a holiday vibe to the school. And now we are joined by Zohe from student council. Zohe, thank you for joining us. Of course. So, Zohe, where does the tradition deck the halls come from? Each year, uh, student council goes to a conference at CCNJ where we present uh, the traditions and ideas um, that we do at our school. Um, and the other schools come there with their presentations and they present their ideas and traditions. And one of our students years ago that um, went to one of these conferences liked uh, something called Deck the Halls there and brought it back and we adopted the tradition. Nice. How do you think Deck the Halls boosts holiday spirit in the school? Um, it's when, if, if you were to have like a uh, Christmas without Christmas decorations, it just doesn't feel right, you know? Yeah. And if you, when you walk through the hallways and um, compared to the hallways that you walk at, in, in, in the start of the year, that are just, they're all plain and there's, there's, it's just a plain hallway. And during the uh, holiday season when they're all, dec the doors are decorated with a uh, holiday themed um, decorations on them, it just, it, it brings more of that holiday vibe. Definitely. Um, how's the experience been putting together dozens of doors in such a short amount of time? It's very tedious. Um, a lot of the times, um, so student council members and me, we've stayed uh, during lunches uh, on B-days, and um, we've stayed after school to put together these doors, um, make sure that they're finished. And um, we have a lot of orders coming in, and they're coming in really uh, fast at some times, and we have to get these doors done. And so it gets really tedious, and um, you have to work really fast. But the teachers, th they love it. A lot of the times I done uh, doors for teachers I knew and they loved it. Uh, and a lot of times I done doors for uh, teachers that I didn't even know who they were. And now I know who they are because they liked the doors that I did. Um, so it, it, it also brings you more closer to a lot of new teachers and teachers that you already have or know. Thank you, Zoe, for your time. Of course, it was great being here. Our detectives, Jake and Julian, are back at it again with an extensive interview with Mr. Chow. Let's check it out. Mythical Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to our third installment of uh, The Actual Faculty with J and J. Oh, dear God. You already know what it is. Today, we have another one of our great faculty members of this great school that we go to. Today we have Mr. Chow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so today we have a couple questions to ask Chow. Uh, oh no, it's okay, you shouldn't be worried. Okay, cool. Uh, but the first question that we're gonna ask is, what mythical creature would improve the world the most if it existed? Mythical Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> Cthulhu. Cthulhu. Yeah, okay. Yes. Yeah. So it just it just just wipes stuff out. True. <laughs> Very interesting answer. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. Okay. Um. If you could travel anywhere, where would it be? Oh. Uh. I'd go back to New Zealand. New Zealand. You went to yeah. New Zealand. Yeah. Yeah. How was it over there? It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Like Lord of the Rings, pretty much. I don't know. It's like Middle Earth. It's, it's literally Middle Earth. Uh, <laughs> you got the Shire somewhere. You got got the Isengard, like the volcano and everything. It's a pretty cool country. Cool. I'd do it again. If you were born back as any celebrity, which one would it be and why? That's a good one. Any celebrity, any celebrity. Why? Kim Kardashian. Uh, no, God, no. Nah, I don't think. No, no, no. Uh, mm, that's a good. That's a tough question. If you can't think of one, we'll narrow it down. To, like, we'll give you like three. Give me three. Give me three. Yeah, you got three. Johnny Depp. <laughs> oh God, no. Jack Black. <laughs> Kanye West. You know what? I'll choose Kanye West. He seems to have an interesting life. You know, before he went crazy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 
before Kanye went crazy, I'll be I'll be Kanye because he seemed like he was riding. He he was hitting his uh, creative flow. Yeah, just peak. You know, he was then. peaking then. Yes, I'll do Kanye. Good times. Yeah. Hi. Uh, if you could bring back any extinct animal, which one would it be? Oh my God, what's extinct? The, the, the dodo. Dinosaurs, dodos. Oh, you know what? You know what? T Rex, just for fun, just to see what they'll happen in real life. You know, real life Jurassic Park. Do T Rex. T Rex. Yes. It's like. <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably be more scared of a velociraptor. True. Velociraptor True. quick. But T-Rex, you see it walking down the street, just like running around, knocking cars everywhere. That'd be fun. That doesn't sound fun. <laughs> It'd be interesting. Like It'd be interesting. I'll give you that. You know, the highway you see like on the news, like you see a helicopter pan and T-Rex like ripping cars apart. Yeah. It's it's fun <laughs> until it's your car. <laughs> yeah. Fair, fair enough. Fair enough. Um Oh yeah. Okay. Who do you, what, do you, what would you rather have? Would you rather be super flexible or super strong? Super strong. Super strong? Super flexible as in like Mr. Fantastic super flexible or? Yeah. Not like stretch arm strong. Oh, like it's super strong. Super, super strong, strong, like Hulk like. Oh, okay. Yeah. Alright, uh, would you rather have super hearing or super sight? Super sight. Super sight. Photographer, you know, yeah. I'll see from a distance. That'd be cool. Who do you think? Oh, not so bad. Go, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. No, that's okay. Who do you think would win in a fight? A mountain lion or a polar bear? Polar bear. Polar bear. They're big. They are big. They're big. Mountain Pack a punch. Lion. True. Pack a punch. Oh. Yeah, that's a good one. Fast, they're big, heavy. Yeah. Carry more weight, so like, uh, automatically, they would carry more uh, power and everything. What? I said the fact that like they're just heavier, so like yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a heavyweight versus a lightweight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Once you get one good solid hit, and you're done. Mm. And then you just the bear goes to town after that. And um, if you could have any rap name, what would it be? Oh God. <laughs> the last question was important. Yeah, so. it's a really good question. Oh, uh, rap name. My goodness. I think like NC's away or something like that. Oh God, no! That's, <laughs> That's terrible. A, that, that, That's pretty terrible. Good, though. What? That's terrible. That's pretty. That's pretty. That's a tough question. <laughs> I'd say Brooklyn C. Brooklyn, Brooklyn C. Because I'm from Brooklyn, and my last name is C. Chat. Yeah. Okay. What would your rap name be, Jake? Jake. That's terrible. Oh, you gotta be a little creative with it. I'd be like Kanye West. I just, you know, that is my rap name. No, I got Eagle. I can do something with that. Eagle? Or you could be like Drake, just be, yeah, like Jake. Okay. I mean, yeah. Sense. I'd be Jake, exactly. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. That's fair enough. I don't know what my name would be. Julian. 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 <laughs> I want to be Julian. What's your last name? Evans. I have a really basic last name. Jevin. Jevin. No. That's, that's just weird. That's bad. That's, <laughs> that's, that's bad. really bad. No, that sounds weird. One eternity later. But before we go, Chow, this tradition that we have on the show, every time we have somebody on the show, we have somebody. Sign the <laughs> oh my God. God. So could you please sign this for us? Oh, Jesus. Oh no, we need another marker. We have one on standby. <laughs> okay. Projectile. I think you use that instead. Oh, thank you, thank for you for coming. Oh, that's the coolest signature. Well, I just wore a wall of fame. Yeah, we already, as you can see over there, our wall of fame is. Oh, you have rapidly. Mr. Federer too. Yeah. Who else is up there? You have Darius. And who's the other one? Mr. Z. Mr. Z. In his good days. Oh, wow. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So this concludes the third episode of Factual Faculty. Until next time, this is Jay and Jay making and the great. great. Thanks for having me on. Ladies and gentlemen, the truth is out, but it's up to you to decide what you want to do with it. A special thanks to Mr. Chow for this time, and his time and cooperation. Mr. Chow really makes this school a better place. Speaking of place, the PLACE Holiday Fund is going on. PLACE stands for Political Literacy and Civic Education, and is a class which focuses on current events and the government. 
class was formerly known as Ipple, but has seen some changes recently. It is currently taught by the beloved teachers Dr. Justin Negerball and Mr. Scott Wisaki. My name is uh, Justin Negerball and I teach PLACE as well as uh, AP Government Politics here at uh, South Norfolk High School. Uh, PLACE stands for Political Literacy and Civic Education. Uh, it used to be called um, IPL, Institute for Political Legal Education. We changed a couple things around and now it's called PLACE, so this is the PLACE Holiday Fund this year. The PLACE Holiday Fund is a fundraiser that helps families in South Brunswick. All the money gets donated to friends and family in SBE who are in need of it. So IPL, prior to PLACE, had always done some sort of community service project. What we try to impress with the students is that public service and politics go hand in hand. Right? Po political service is really public service. You're trying to um, help people really at the end of the day and, and um, trying to figure out where resources go and how they're allocated for people. Um, one of the ways that we kind of address that issue and, and to remind ourselves that politics is about people is doing something for people. Anyone can be involved with the Place Holiday Funds by donating money, donating gift cards, food, anything really that will help out the families that we're targeting. Um, we will be walking around lunches um, for about a week, so hopefully we have a lot of people give us some money for the fund. Students who wish to show the support or get involved can do so by donating money during their lunches to the Place Holiday Fund. For more information on the Place Holiday Fund and the class in general, Follow them at SBHS underscore place on Twitter. Thanks to all the students who donated and helped out with the fundraiser. And special thanks to Dr. Neg and the 2019 Place class. It's great to see the money go to an impactful cause. Definitely. Hey, I wonder what's going on around the world this time. Oh, yeah. I'm sure our niece team has uncovered a lot of information. More strange things are going on around the world. And our news team, Andy and Mark, are here once again to report on it. What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of What in the World. I'm Andy. And I'm Mark. And What in the World is where we talk about all the crazy news articles happening around the world. Alright, and in today's segment we found a group of teenagers found in a bank vault. A bank vault? Yes, a bank vault. What were they doing in there, Mark? Honestly, I have no idea. Maybe they were trying to find some money. I guess. But it was rumored that the bank vault was closed and they just broke in and decided to chill there and then they got themselves locked in. Now, was this bank vault functional? It was. They did not know that, though. Police in Florida said a 17-year-old playing around in an abandoned bank vault ended up needing to be rescued from inside the former business's vault. Hollywood police said two teenagers entered the former Bank of America branch Wednesday, and one of them, a 17-year-old boy, ended up locked inside the vault about 1.30 p.m. Unfortunately, there were two juveniles that were playing around inside an abandoned bank vault, and they didn't know that the vault was still active. Hollywood police officer Christian Lada while playing inside the vault, one of them got trapped inside and luckily the other one was able to get outside and was able to call 911. Police responded with the Hollywood Fire Department, a Broward Sheriff Fire Rescue Technical Rescue Team, and at least two private vault technicians to attempt to free the boy bank high style, but an attempt to drill into the wall of the bank to reach the boy failed. Lada said the boy was released from the vault after more than three hours when a Bank of America employee from the branch's new location was able to come to the scene and give authorities the combination to unlock the door. The teenagers were released into the custody of their parents. It's kind of crazy to think that somehow you can manage to get locked into a bank vault. That is, I mean, I honestly don't understand why you would go into a bank vault in the first place, but you know, to you think they're able to find any money in there? It's, I mean, it's an abandoned bank vault, so I mean, unless they're like looking for pirates and stuff, then I would assume not. Kind of wondering why they were in that bank vault to begin with, aren't you, Mark? Yep, let's ask around the school to find out. Indeed. I think they were in the vault to like try and get snacks or something. I think the kids were in the vault because there's some money in there. You know what I'm saying? Like big gold diggers out here. You know, uh, I think the aspiration to see other kids was to um, obtain some money. 
by entering the vault. I thought the kids were in the vault because maybe they were trying to get some extra money and maybe they were um, doing stuff they shouldn't be doing. I would have gone in the vault because I like money, so I would have gone in and gotten some money. Hey Mark. Yes. Remember those deer from last episode that were fighting in the middle of the street? Of course, I love those deer. Well, the deer are batted again. This time, they were busting through the window of a courthouse. Damn. Why are these deer always trying to get into stuff that don't belong to them? I'm not sure, Mark. Not sure. The deer smashed through a glass pane at the cross-country courthouse in Wayne, causing employees to, and visitors to flee. It was a very scary time for us that we're still here in the courthouse, Debbie Davis, cross-country collector, told the Arkansas Democratic Gazette. It broke through real thick glass in front of my office and it made the audible sound when it broke. Davis said that Fish and Games officers were able to escort the deer outside. They actually let him loose through this jail sally port unharmed, Davis said. They just opened the door because that is where they had it trapped and got it out. The door cut itself, breaking through the glass, but I assume it wasn't too bad or they wouldn't have let it go. Well, it seems the world is back at it again with some more crazy stuff going on. That's right, and I can't wait to see what the world has in store next time. I'm Andy. I'm Mark. And this is What, what in the, the world. world. Wow, thanks again to the Wacky News team to keep us updated on what you don't hear about. With winter sports starting up, we took the time to speak to someone from each team and find out their expectations and goals for the upcoming season. Personally, I've been playing since I was like seven, eight years old, but I've been on the varsity ice hockey team all four years of high school. As a team, I would say our goals are definitely to focus on teams that we couldn't beat last year and to make it to GMCs and hopefully win. Um, based off our first few games, we definitely see ourselves reaching that goal, um, but we'll see what happens. Our goals this year is to compete in every meet, uh, hopefully get a couple victories along the way, and uh, hopefully in GMCs, come in the top five for the boys and top four or three for the girls. I feel like we left a couple points on the board in terms of each individual race. Um, I think we be more consistent with our times. And we have a lot of incoming freshmen, and also we really love seeing the, uh, the seniors lead the rest of our team. Um, without them, uh, the team wouldn't be as good as they're going to be this year. I've been bowling for four years. My goals for this upcoming season are to see who shoots 300 first. And I'm looking forward to bowling in the state in GMC tournament. Last year we came in second in GMC, this year we hope to come in first. This is my sixth season as head coach, and I did one year freshman coach, so seven with the program. Uh, we are very young, and a lot of new uh, girls getting a lot of minutes. I haven't played varsity, so just let me see how we grow. I'm excited to see how the program grows over the next couple of years. We want to have a winning season. We want to win all of our home games. We want to um, win the red division. We want to go as far as we can in the playoffs, but we want to have fun, and uh, we want to grow as a team. Uh, we need to maintain the defense we play, but we need to improve uh, shooting and scoring. It's just, we need to get better there, and I think we will. Uh, I've been playing basketball for like nine or ten years. Of course, we want to win as many games as we can. We want to win the GMC, of course, and go as far as we can in states. Our team doesn't want to focus that much on last, last year, as we're, we know we're a lot better. But we want to focus on playing team defense, team basketball, and that will lead us into the W category. doing this sport for four years now. My goals for us would probably be to repeat as GMC champions uh, and then win GMC relays also. We kind of dropped the ball on that last year, so that would be nice. I think as seniors, you know, we have more of an opportunity now to contribute to, you know, the success of our team and the success of our own sub squads, you know, sprints, distance, that type of stuff. You know, we've been running, working out, um, we've been in the weight room a little more, so we think that will help us. Um, just getting sharp, getting our team together, that's about it. So I've done track for two years in middle school, and then four years in high school. 
well, four seasons of winter track and then three seasons of spring track going into my fourth in the spring. Uh, we're coming out and we're going to try to win state relays indoors and also group four state individuals. We're really excited to come out and show everyone that even though we lost some people, some key athletes last year, that we have more people stepping up and we're going to be just as good, if not better. We want to improve the energy of the team with each other, everyone cheering each other on and always being there, no matter what meet it is, no matter what kind of uh, event it is. I've been coaching wrestling for two years. I started coaching here last year, and the year before that, I coached at high school. Something to improve upon, I think, can always be um, the record, obviously, but also team chemistry and the energy in the practice room. The district tournament, uh, hoping to see our guys place first, second, and third, and move on to regions, and hopefully make states. I have been doing cheerleading for around five years. I'd like to improve on um, the confidence of our team so that we're more confident going out and performing. My goals for this upcoming season are to go to nationals and do well and place. I look forward to cheering at my last basketball season and being able to cheer on my friends. Can't wait to see how this winter season finishes up. Keep up the hard work and good luck to all the winter sports. That's all for our announcements today, guys. Remember to stay tuned for our next episode. This is Jared and Skylar signing off.